And it looks like I broke one of the clips there, but you know what? There's a screw right beside it. I really don't care. Hey friends, today we have an HP 17 big bulky thing, man, but boy is it a pretty computer. We're gonna take this apart and we're gonna put this solid state drive inside. Come on down. All right, to do this repair, you're going to need a pry tool of some sort. This is a soft metal one that I got on eBay. They are often mar marketed as clay modeling tools. This is a number one Phillips head screwdriver. And uh, just for anybody who's new to my videos, yes, I use a metal pry tool. No, I don't short anything out. No, most of the time I don't gouge anything either. Yes, you can gouge plastics with this. But guess what? It'll be okay, because I know what I'm doing. I've used this tool for a decade. Flame on in the comments. So this is specifically an HP 17-BY0022CY, in case I can't see that later. You have to take these strips off as a bunch of screws hide underneath these rubber strips. Which is the big dirty secret for most recent-ish HP laptops. They like to hide screws under these rubber bumpers. Okay, let's go in. Take all the screws out of the bottom. Oh, that one was loose. So we're gonna need to check the hinges when we get in here. Take all the screws out of the bottom. Hmm. This is pretty common. Most computers, you have to take all the screws out of the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and take the bumper screws out first. Since they look a little prettier than the other ones, I wonder if they're made of different material. It also looks like someone may have tried to open this. There's a screw here on the front that is at an angle. And it's it kind of looks like someone may have chewed up the screw head a little, but maybe not. Maybe it's a defect from the factory, but it still worked. Yeah, it looks like the uh, bumper screws are at least different in terms of how shiny they are, but I don't think they're actually different. Regardless, since they are separated, I'm going to keep them separated since they look different visually. I'm sure there's a reason for that. I'm sure I don't know that reason. Maybe those are stainless. Who knows? All right. The optical drive will come out once you've taken this screw out. Notice there's these big flat washer-like screws hidden under the optical drive. A fairly recent computer with an optical drive. It's amazing, isn't it? All right, all screws are out. Now the ugly part. Now the part I've been dreading. And the, the shine from this is particularly nice and I really like it. So this one has a really cool uh, design. Actually, I don't know, some people would probably consider it pretty ugly too. Uh, but it's interesting. And it's more interesting than a bland color. So there's already some separation here in the front for some reason. I'm just gonna put my pry tool in that crack and push in and then pry down like this. And you see, you just keep doing this and get these clips to let go all along the front. The front is only held together with one screw, so it's usually the easiest place to go in. This is an eighth generation i5, so this computer can't be more than about three, three and a half years old maybe? I can't remember. Go around the edges. This is where the CD drive is. You actually can probably do some of that by hand. Uh, or not. Wow, that's actually a lot harder than I thought it would be. All right. I think I popped something on my nail there. All right. Get the gap here. And it's popping apart very, very easily. <laughs> Might get a break today. I'm going to go ahead and pull this forward again here. All right. There's a clip somewhere or a screw that I've missed. Did I miss a screw? Let's find out. 
No, I didn't miss a screw. It's just these clips right here are difficult. So the CD drive area clips, uh, can't really see them. Yeah, but the CD drive area clips are being a little difficult. So let's uh, let's zoom you out a bit. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I was zoomed in. Let's do this. We've got the front. Uh, look at that. The front and the side, and you can basically just work it by bending the plastic. This is how they put it together. Yep, there you go. And it's all loose. Let's see. Yep, didn't... It looks like I broke one of the clips there, but you know what? There's a screw right beside it. I really don't care. So let's turn this back around the right way. What do we have in here? Let's check this out. Let's see what we have. Okay. That's different. I wasn't expecting that. So this computer actually has an Intel Optane SSD already in it. And it has a regular 2.5 hard drive, which we will replace with this. <clears throat> had I known it had one of these stinking Optane drives, I would have uh, probably tried to get an M2 drive. But I'm not really super worried about that. Uh, let's see. I'm not a big fan of Optane in general. So, what we need to do here is get this hard drive out. Oh, real quick, um, two memory slots, probably DDR4, Wi-Fi here, this is your non-replaceable CPU fan, um, there's one screw, two screws holding the fan, and the heatsink looks like it's just the standard four screw setup there. There's your LCD cable, this is a speaker, there's another speaker that sneaks in. Well, where do you sneak in? It must go in on the bottom. There's another speaker over here. Uh, this is your keyboard, touchpad, uh, probably a backlight here, and single SSD slot, battery. Um, while I'm in here, let's go ahead and tighten these hinge mounts because if those screws were loose, these may be loose too. They aren't on that side. They aren't on this side. Did HP make a good design? I'm shocked. Shocked. Okay. So this isn't held in with any kind of screw or anything like that. So let's go... Let me give you a little more light here. This isn't held in. You, you basically can just pull up gently. You can actually pull up on that connector. It'll be okay. Pull up gently and it will come up. You, it has these flaps you can try to grab, but they're rigid. And uh, there's a piece of tape holding it. How quaint. A piece of tape. Of all the things in the world, why is it taped down? Well, if you just pull hard enough, maybe it'll come up. No. Nope. piece of tape is not holding it, in fact. It was stuck under here. So it has these nubs. Here, look. It has these nubs here. See these, these nubs? Here, let me take the drive loose from the connector. All right, see these two nubs right here? Look at those nubs. Yep, those two nubs sticking out on there. That's, uh, they go underneath here. And that's what sticks the drive in. So let's see, match them up. There you go. Come on, buddy. And this is a screwless design. So it really is as simple as just taking the rails off and putting them on the new drive in the, with the same orientation. It is perhaps one of the simplest things to do. You just get the little pegs to go in the holes, just give it a good little gentle squeeze, and connector. If you're careful, you're not going to pull on the connector and everything will be okay. Get the front ends in there first, like that, and then the rest just drops in place. <clears throat> what fun. Now, it's important to note, because this thing has this Optane drive, we may have to go in and do something to reset that. Um, I'm not sure. Anyway. Um, Reassembly is the reverse of disassembly, and it's pretty darn easy. Since it was all clipped back here first, we'll clip the back first. And you basically just give it some nice wide pressure so that it's not going to break anything. 
These clips here look like they're going to be a pain. Possibly. Uh, if I didn't just break them off, who knows? Anyway, it seems like they're lining up fine. But, if in doubt, take your screwdriver and put these flat, ugly screws back in place and everything appears to be fine. You know what? I think I broke all of those clips, actually. And I don't care. I don't care at all. Why don't I care? Because I think that those plastic clips are stupid and manufacturers need to stop doing it. Where is my drive? Yeah, I really hate plastic clips like that. There. Drive's fine. Good. Let's put the screw back in the drive. Alright. It's a... As you can see, it's an extremely complicated reassembly. Very, very difficult. You know, top tier difficulty. Zero out of ten would not disassemble again or something <sighs> okay look at that look at that all right and now we need to do the shiny screws that go into these bump strip holes shiny 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 come on mm, take a little bit of torque there and Notice one of the tricks I use is I will spin the shaft of the screwdriver with my fingers because it's smaller so you get more rotations per finger movement until I can't really do it anymore and I need more power then I move to the handle. That's just one of the things that you pick up on. It makes it a lot easier to disassemble things quickly once you get into the hang of doing it. Take your rubber bump strip here, and uh, you really just have to get one end in, and it kind of falls in line. Just keep it between the lines. It's kind of like drawing. Make sure that on the other end it kind of lines up, doesn't stick out. Same deal with this one. Ugh, it's so satisfying. All right. There's actually a little alignment peg on the bottom of that in a couple of places. Interesting. I'm not worried about it though. If you just start from one end, you push it up against the end here and just feed it down like this, gently, everything will be A-OK, -okay, my friends. Alright. We put it together. Now, just to satisfy the question since it was brought up, I'm gonna turn it on Let's see what happens with this Optane stuff. Oh, it won't boot. Oh, crud. Well, okay, maybe the Optane thing isn't needed. I know what I did wrong, though. I didn't copy the GUID. Um, see, I do these clones by hand using SG Disk and uh, NTFS Resize, NTFS Clone. It doesn't boot because the GPT thing is not correct. Uh, I'll fix this. You don't have to worry about this. The bottom line is, you know, you know what to do now. So enjoy ripping apart your HP 17 and upgrading it to a solid state drive that isn't Optane. And uh, I don't know if that M2 slot was PCI Express or not, but I'm betting it is. Um, you may want to just get a big fat PCI Express drive. Anyway, good luck. Have fun. Take care. Thanks for watching, liking, subscribing, commenting, checking out my other videos. You know all the stuff that people on the YouTubes like to say, or the or the bit shoots or the Odysseys because I'm on those too. Have a wonderful day. Take care.